Want to see a couple of media ripping towers? Here are two special purpose towers I built. We'll take a look at them in this episode. So as many of you know, I have moved recently from Florida to Oregon. And in the process of moving, all of the stuff that I had sequestered in corners around my house has found its way to the surface. And that includes these two towers, which were in service and were in a lot of use four, five, six years ago, and which I'm getting ready to take out of service right now. But before I did, I wanted to show you them because they're both really interesting. They show what you can still do, maybe not this one, but they show you what you can still do with tower PCs and special purpose builds, and they're kind of interesting. So this guy has four DVDs on it, and its purpose was it was actually really meant to, to rip CDs. We have about 16,000 songs in our CD collection, and what we wanted to do is we wanted to be able to listen to them, so we wanted to rip them to flack. And what we did is we used DB Power Amp to drive this computer, which has these four um, CD drives on it. D they're DVD drives, but for our purposes, we're ripping CDs. And the benefit was is that we could fill all four of these the ripper would start ripping and as it would rip, it would pop out a CD and we'd pop in another one. And we were able to power through ripping our collection of, of CDs relatively quickly in a few days. And ever since then, this machine has pretty much stood idle. So that's what this machine is for. This machine has this weird little drive in it. This is a cassette drive. This cassette drive allows you to rip the old fashioned cassettes into a digital form. And there's a whole set of little wires around the back that were needed to pull the audio out of it. Is, it is essentially one of those little realistic cassette decks built into the tower. But what we had is we have this, we've got a couple CDs, and we have the ability to rip the cassette. Now, neither of these are used now. We, we wanted to rip a couple of um, performance cassettes and special mix tapes and some cassettes from some of our friends into it. So that's what we wanted to do. Here, this was kind of interesting because we did this ripping before Spotify became a thing, before Apple Music was out. And today, most of what we ripped, we wouldn't really have had to. We could just listen to it on Spotify. But we also have a bunch of, of one-time special CDs, again, from independent bands or one-time performances and things like that, that you just can't get on Spotify. So having the full bit flack version of that is awesome. So I'll take you inside these for a few minutes and, and this will show you these two sort of specialized towers before I tear them down and get them ready for donation. All right, so this is the inside of the machine with um, the cassette reader. And this is the cassette reader. As you can see, there's a pile of drives. You can also see a lot of dirt on the fan. That fan filter was never cleaned. Um, but the cassette reader has a variety of sound inputs that had to go into this thing and it kind of worked. It wasn't the best in the world, but it kind of worked. This is a pretty empty case. This is the DVD bank. And as you can see, there are just those four DVDs there. Now, I'm not entirely sure why that piece of gaffer tape is there. I'm guessing something was sharp or I had to cut something and I decided to protect myself. But that's what's going on there. So a day has gone by and the five machines that I was getting ready to donate have been donated. They're going to a good cause. Um, and I'm getting on with the process of setting up the shop. As you can see, the 3D printers are still in their not entirely unpacked condition. Uh, but within a week or two, I should have most of the shop up and running and we'll move on to other stuff. So very much to my surprise, the Plus Deck still exists and is still available from Amazon. You can get it for somewhere between $179 and $400 in what most vendors seem to describe as barely used condition. Now, I'm not really sure I would recommend that if you want to record cassettes, you could probably just take any cassette player with an audio out and pump it into the audio in of your computer and get pretty close just by starting and stopping the cassette instead of using the Plus Deck's rather cumbersome and not always functional software that came with it. And of course, you also run the risk of that software not running on modern machines. That software may or may not have been updated since I ran it on 
probably either Windows 7 or XP at the time that I put it together. Um, but that's, that's still there. You can still order it off of Amazon. As for the DVD players, if you wanted to build a DVD ripping machine, that's a really practical project and it's not very expensive. DVD uh, drives are roughly 20 bucks a pop. You can find yourself a relatively inexpensive motherboard and processor. You do not need a heck of a lot of performance. You need a lot of ports. What you really want to do is find a motherboard with probably at least five SATA ports because you want to get a port for each of the drives as well as a port for uh, a boot drive. So you want to do that. Um, you could get away with booting off a USB 3 port if you had to um, or an internal USB if you needed to, but you're better off with, with you know, probably looking for a six SATA port machine. One of my next videos is going to be talking about whether you should build or buy a NAS. Uh, you saw at the beginning of, of this a picture of two NAS boxes sitting next to the two towers I was talking about. Those are two NASs I built, and I'll talk about that in an upcoming video. For ZDNet's DIY IT, I'm David Goertz. Go forth and build something cool.